Hi guys, welcome to this session and in this session we are going to revise time, distance and speed which is one of the very important topic from quantitative ability. I am your quantitative ability tutor Kasturi Sanam. Guys, in this particular revision session we are going to talk about five different concepts related with time, distance and speed and we are going to solve few advanced level problems, five advanced level problems which are related with this particular chapter. So the prerequisite for this session is that you at least are familiar with the concepts because here I am going to deal with advanced level of problems which require you the understanding, which require the understanding of the basic concepts at least. So guys, uh, we are going to talk about five, we are going to solve five questions and for each question you will be getting 90 seconds. So let us see who can get all the five questions right. If at all you can get all the five questions right in 90 seconds, which is 1.5 minutes, it means that you are well prepared for your exam as far as time, distance and speed topic goes. So let us start, the, start with the first problem. When a man travels equal distance at a speed of V1 and V2, then the average speed is 4 km per hour. When he travels for equal time with same speeds, the average speed is 4.5 km per hour. Answer the following questions. Guys, here we are given three questions which are related with finding the value of V1 and V2. And this particular question is from the, is testing the concept of average speed whether you have understood the concept of average speed or not so average speed is not just average of two individual speeds but it is total distance covered divided by total time taken to cover that particular distance so this is one concept that this particular question is testing and also the second concept that it is testing is that speed is directly proportional to distance and inversely proportional with time. So guys with this two hints solve, start solving the problem and your time for of 90 seconds starts now. Okay guys, now your time has ended and the correct value of V1 is 3 kilometers per second, 3 kilometers per hour and that of V2 comes out as 6 kilometers per hour. If you guys would have known two small formulas, then you could have solved this question within 30 seconds or even less time. So the important formula that you ought to know was at constant distance. When we keep the distance same, so at constant distance, the average speed is equal to two times the product of individual speeds divided by the sum of the speeds. So this is the formula for average speed at constant distance. 
when you are dealing with constant time, so when t is constant, then we have average speed is sum of the two speeds divided by 2. So if at all you guys want to know how I came to this particular formula, then I am going to solve it for you. I will be using a different pen here. Now guys, here we are given that the distance is constant. And like I said, average speed is nothing but distance travel. Total distance travel. So in this case, he is traveling the distance d twice divided by the total time taken, which is t1 plus now we have v1 upon v2 which is the ratio of their speeds equal to t2 upon t1 correct because my speed is equal to distance upon time my distance is constant so speed is inversely proportional to the time taken so v1 upon v2 is equal to t2 upon t1 you guys should know this by heart now so I have V1 T1 is equal to V2 T2 and this ratio of mine is equal to D. So I have this ratio, this particular V1 T1 equal to V2 P, T2 equal to D. So I substitute this here in this equation. I get 2 into V2 T2 or V1 T1. 2 into V1 T1 divided by, I want to cancel out T1. So all I am going to do is put the value of T2 as V1 T1 divided by V2. When I solve this, I get this equation. Similarly, when my time is constant, my average speed is given by the formula average speed equal to distance 1 plus distance 2 divided by t plus t because my t is constant in this case it is t e is the same t1 is equal to t2 which is equal to t and then i have v1 upon v2 equal to d1 upon d2 equal to t so when i solve this when i substitute and solve in a similar way i get this formula. I hope you guys have understood how I have arrived at these two formulas. I am going to give you 10 seconds to look, have a look at the screen and scribble in your book and get derived these two formulas and then by heart it because it is important. You will save a lot of time if you know the formula for average speed when you have constant distance and constant time. So I'm going to just wait for 10 seconds. All right, guys, now I'm going to rub out the my screen. So here we are given that the average speed at constant distance is 4, 4 kilometers per hour. So I have 2 into V1 into V2 upon V1 plus V2 equal to 4. Also, when my T is constant, I'm given that my average speed is 4.5. So this also I substitute 4.5 is equal to V1 upon V1 plus V2 upon 2. So I get the value of my V1 plus V2 as 9. I substitute this value here and I get the value of my V1 V2 as 18. So my V1 is 3 kilometers per second per hour sorry. And my V2 is 6 kilometers per hour. So all, had I known this formula first hand, had I known the average speed when my distance is constant and T is constant, I would have got the value of V1, V2 within seconds. So please by heart this particular formula. Now, I am asked what is the sum of the two speeds. So the sum of two speeds is 9 kilometer per hour. 
the difference between two speeds is 3 km per hour and the product of two speeds is 18 km per hour. So, I have solved the first question. Let us go to the next question. Ayodhya, Banaras, Chitrakut, which are equidistant from each other. In terms of geometry, they form an equilateral triangle. Anand and Bajram start simultaneously from Ayodhya and Banaras respectively towards Chitrakut. When Anand covers 100 kilometers, Bajram covers such distance that the distance between Anand and Bajram makes a 90 degree angle with the road joining Banaras and Chitrakut. When Bajrang reaches Chitrakut, Anand is still 150 kilometers away from Chitrakut. Find the distance between Ayodhya and Banaras. So guys, this concept, this question tests two concepts. One is that of speed and second is that of geometry. How well you know equilateral triangle and properties related with equilateral triangles. So we have A, B and C, Ayodhya, Banaras and Chitrakut and they are forming equilateral triangle meaning all three sides are the same. So Anand and Bajrang both are moving towards Chitrakut and Anand is covering 100 kilometers. And when he is covering 100 kilometers, that when I draw a line on BC, it makes a right angle. So it is making a right angle. Now one property is that the distance, let this be D. So the distance DC, if it is X, then the distance EC is going to be x by 2. This is a property about, uh, about an equilateral triangle that when you draw a perpendicular, then the hypotenuse is going to be twice that of the, of the right angle side. So DC is going to be two times that of EC. So I have explained you this property so that it will be easy for you to solve and your time starts now. Okay guys, so the time has ended and here we are solving this particular problem. Now guys, look carefully at this particular geometry, at this triangle. And can I say my AC is equal to BC? Yes, because it is an equilateral triangle. So my AC, which is equal to X plus 100, is equal to my BC, which is equal to to BE plus X by so I get my BE as 100 plus X by 2 so this particular portion of mine is 100 plus X by 2 I will rub this calculation 
I will just write down speed equal to distance upon time. So here my time is constant. So my speed is directly proportional to the distances. So can I say my AD upon my BE that is the distance traveled by Anand and the distance traveled by Bajrang when he reaches E and when he reaches D is nothing but 100 upon 100 plus X upon 2. So this is the distance that he has traveled. Now when Bajrang is covering X by 2, what is the distance that Anand is covering? So Anand is still 150 kilometers away from Chitrakut, which means he has covered a distance of x minus 150 when Bajrang has covered x by 2. So this ratio is going to be equal to x minus 150 divided by x by 2. Correct? Because the time taken for Bajrang to travel x by 2 kilometers is equal to the time taken by Anand to travel x minus 150 because he is still 150 kilometers away from Chitrakoot. So which means that he is at x minus 150th kilometers and the time taken for both of them to cover that particular distance is the same. So for Anand to cover x minus 150 and for Bajrang to cover x by 2 distance the time taken is going to be the same. Similarly, the time taken for Anand to cover 100 kilometers and Bajrang to cover 100 plus x by 2 kilometers is the same. So, I can equate this and I can find out the value of x. So, the value of my x comes out as 200. You can solve this and you can confirm it. You can solve this particular equation and you will get the value of x as 200. So, when I substitute it here in this particular equation, in this particular triangle, then I have my BC is equal to 100 plus X. So X is 200 which makes my BC equal to 300 kilometers. So my BC is 300 kilometers and the distance between, we are asked to find out the distance between Ayodhya and Banaras. So we are asked to find out AB, but AB is equal to BC, which is 300 kilometers. I hope you guys have understood this question. In this question, we have used the concept that speed is directly proportional to distance when we have the time constant. And we have taken the ratios of the distance covered in a particular time by Anand and by Pajram. So guys, let's go to the next problem. Three people, A, B and C can travel with a speed of 3 km per hour, 4 km per hour and 5 km per hour respectively. They travel from the same place at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock. When B meets A, B sends him back with a message to C. When will C get the message and how much distance had he traveled before getting the message? So guys, this is a simple concept. This is this question is testing a simple concept of relative speed. I am going to cover relative speed in detail in our train section or, and also in boat and stream section. But for time being, this is a simple question. Please solve it and your time starts now.
Okay guys, the time has ended and we are given that three people A, B, C. The speed of these three people is three kilometers per hour, four kilometers per hour and five kilometers per hour. So when I take the LCM of A and B, it comes out as 12. So at 12 kilometer, A and B are going to meet. So A is starting at 1 o'clock, B is starting at 2 o'clock and 3 is starting at 3 o'clock. So A is going to meet B after 4 hours. So which means at 5 o'clock. At 5 p.m. they are going to meet. P.m. or a.m. whatever. At 5 p.m. they will be meeting. Now when they meet, then A is going to give a message to B and A is going to return back to meet C. So they have already covered 12 kilometers where A and B are going to meet. Now at 5 o'clock, what is the distance that is covered by C? So C would have traveled for 2 hours, right? Till 5, till 5 p.m. he has traveled for 2 hours. So in 2 hours he is going to cover a distance of 10 kilometers. So when I plot it on a line, I have 10 kilometers. So we have C here and we have A and B here at 12 kilometers. So the distance between A, B and C, A, B and C is 2 kilometers. So I have plotted it in, a, in this particular uh, diagram. Now when these two meet, B is sending A back again and C is moving in the forward direction. So I have to find out the relative speed between A and C. So the relative speed between A and C is going to be 5 plus 3, correct? Relative speed is going to be 5 plus 3. Because they are moving in opposite direction. They are not moving in same direction. So if they are moving in opposite direction, I have to add the speeds. So the speed comes out as 8 kilometers per hour. And now the distance that is traveled is 2 kilometers. So speed equal to distance upon time. So I have to find out the time when both of them are going to meet. So time is going to be distance upon the relative speed, which is 8. I am going to multiply this by 60 because this comes out as a fraction 1 by 4 and I have to find out the time in minutes. So I am going to find out, I am going to multiply this by 60. So I get 15 minutes. So after A leaves, after 15 minutes A is going to meet C. Now already A and B has met at 5 o'clock, 5 p.m. So A is going to meet C at 5.15 p.m. And now the distance travelled by C in 15 minutes is going to be 5 plus 5 which he is travelling in 2 hours. So 10 plus 5 upon 4 which comes out as 11.5 kilometers. So C would have traveled 11.25 kilometers and they would have met somewhere at this point. I hope you guys have understood this question. This question was testing the concept of relative speed. Now guys, let's move to the next question. A boy plants a bomb at a place and starts running at 36 meters per second. After 43 seconds, the bomb blasts. In how much time will the boy hear the sound of the blast if the speed of sound is 516 meters per second? So guys, this, also, this problem also deals with the concept of relative speed. So the relative speed in this case is 516 minus 36. And then you have to find out the distance which is traveled by the boy in 43 seconds. So once you find out that, you will be able to find out the time. So your time starts now.
Okay guys, the time has ended. Like I said, this question deals with the relative speed concept. So a boy is planting a bomb. Then the bomb is going to blast after 43 seconds. But the boy would have already traveled some distance in 43 seconds. You have to find out what is the distance which is traveled by the boy. If at all I want to depict it in a diagram. The boy is here at time 0. He is placing that bomb. At time 43 seconds, he is going to be at this place. And the sound has to travel this particular distance. So I have, and the boy is also running in the direction of the sound. So I have to find out the relative speed, which is the difference between the two speeds. Now in this case, it is going to be the difference between the two spe speeds because I have both of them who are running in the same direction. So 516 minus 38 comes out as 480. So the relative speed comes out as 480 meters per second. And the distance which is traveled by the boy in 43 seconds is going to be 36 into 43. So guys, my formula is speed equal to distance upon time. So I have to find out the time here. So time is nothing but distance covered which is 36 into 43 upon 480 which is my speed when i solve this i get the answer approximately as 3.225 seconds so the answer comes out as 3 seconds the, one of the option was 3 seconds 5 seconds 10 seconds and 15 seconds so the correct answer is 3 seconds the options were very far off in this particular problem i hope you guys have understood the concept, concept. even if you have come to this particular uh, equation wherein you you may not have done the calculation still it is fine still I can say that okay you've got some conceptual clarity now let us see the next problem Monica and Seema start swimming towards each other from deep end and shallow end respectively of a swimming pool they start their swimming simultaneously in the length of 300 meters pool the ratio of their speed is 1 is to 2 respectively. Each swimmer rests for 6 seconds once she reaches the other end and starts swimming back. Where will they meet for the second time in still water of a swimming pool? Guys, there are no calculations involved in this question. I'm giving you a big hint. There are no calculations that are involved in this question. And your time starts now. Okay guys, so here we are given the ratio of the speed as 1 is to 2 for Monica and Seema. Now I know speed is directly proportional to distance. So if the speed is directly proportional to distance, after say a particular time, if Monica is traveling 100 meters, how much would have Seema travelled? So Seema would have travelled 200 meters. 
so this is the point where they are meeting for the first time they are meeting 100 meters away from the deeper part and 200 meters from the shallower part now again after the second time interval seema would have reached this end she would have taken 6 6 seconds gap and she would have again reached here so she would have traveled total 200 meters till that particular time monica would have just travel 100 meter again so monica would have just travel 100 meter when seema would be here and she is going in this direction now and now monica is also going in this direction so she would have just traveled 100 meters now she is 100 meters away from the shallow end so after the third set of time monica again is going to travel 100 kilometers and reach here and take a six six second break and meanwhile since Monica is traveling 100 meters, Seema would have traveled 200 meters, which is she would have also reached the shallow end. So they are going to meet at the shallow end. So the correct answer is they are going to meet at the shallow end. So guys, this was the last problem and the last problem was an easy one. I hope you guys have understood the concept that I was trying to teach in the speed, distance and time. If at all you have got any one of the questions wrong, since these were very conceptual questions, please solve more problems related with time, distance and speed. That is going to improve your conceptual understanding and conceptual understanding is all that you are going to need during your exam. Since this is a bit difficult topic, I would request everyone to give more attention to speed, distance and time. So guys, with this particular question, I am ending this video. Thank you so much and stay tuned.